Well, hi there and welcome to Lakeside Church. We are an Elim church located here in the beautiful seaside town of Southport in the northwest of England. And we're delighted to welcome you to our online service today. Now, whether you've been a Christian for years or if you're someone who has no faith background at all but are curious about finding out more, we want you to know that you are really welcome here and our hope is that you'll find the service today not only uplifting, inspiring and helpful, but that Lakeside might in the days to come become a place that you too can call home. Now the service today will be starting in around 10 minutes time and we're hoping that you'll be able to stay with us for it. It's going to last for around 50 minutes or so and it's going to include some songs that some of our band will lead us in, a few notices about some up and coming things in the life of the church and an encouraging message from one of our team. And we would love you to engage with us on whatever platform you might be watching this on through the online chat facility. So please don't be shy, drop a comment in there to let us know that you're here with us. And if it's your first time with us, then we would especially love to hear from you as we'd love to get a little gift sent to you by way of saying thanks for being with us today. And if at any time you've got any questions or would love to find out more, then please feel free to get in touch with us. You can head over to our website, the address is on the screen for you. And if you scroll down to where it says contact us, you can either tick one of the boxes on there that might apply or you can type in your own message and we'll get back in touch with you. But we'd love to connect with you, so please don't be shy in doing that. Now, if you're someone who's interested in exploring not only the Christian faith, but maybe you've got questions over what life is all about, its purpose, its meaning and all that kind of thing, then we run a course that's designed specifically to help you explore these things. It's called Alpha. You see, life is full of questions, isn't it? I've got young children and they're forever asking me all kinds of questions as they're learning new things and wanting to know why such and such happens. So much fun seeing how they view the world and all that goes on around them. And you know, that doesn't really change as we grow up and get that bit older. The questions might be a little different to what they used to be, but for all of us, we continue to ask new questions based on the experiences we have. And let's be honest, given all that's going on around us right now with this ongoing pandemic, We've perhaps got more questions than ever before. Questions to do with our mortality, the, the meaning and purpose of life. If there really is a God, then what on earth is going on and why is all this happening? If you're watching this right now and if you're being completely honest with yourself and you find yourself asking these kinds of questions, then I want to ask you a question right now. Why not take the time to join with other like-minded people and try and find out some of the answers to those questions that you have by joining with us on our next online Alpha course. Hey, what have you got to lose? And what's more, you can do it all from the comfort right now of your own home. And along with that, you'll meet some great people along the way. Now, if you don't know anything about Alpha, just take a look at this little clip that will explain it in a bit more detail to you. Every day we ask so many questions. What should I wear? What's the weather going to be like? How am I going to fit everything in? But then there are those bigger questions, like why am I here? Where am I heading? Is there more to life than this? I had arrived at an answer to the most important issue that we humans ever deal with. Is there a God? And I had arrived there without ever really looking at the evidence. And I was supposed to be a scientist. At 28, uh, I had gotten many of the things that I thought I wanted. My girlfriend was on the cover of magazines, I had a Beamer, and I was so unhappy. It was a realization maybe that I would, I would never find happiness where I was looking for. I think for so many years, you know, I always just strived to be strong in myself. All I needed was me and my buddies and, you know, would be like invincible, but the truth is none of us are. And I found purpose, I found meaning, I found hope. God took something so broken 
and made it a beautiful art piece. Alpha is a place where you can be yourself. You can say what you think and challenge everything. No, no question is too complex or too simple. And what your point of view is, is as important as anyone else's. We are going on a journey together, an adventure to explore the questions of life, faith, and meaning. Interested? Well, here's what you need to do. Simply contact us to let us know that you'd like to be part of this. The best way to do that is to go to our website, www.lakesidechurch.uk, and on our homepage, you'll see that box called Alpha. Simply click on that, fill in your details, just your name, an email address or contact number, press submit, and that will come through to us where Sue, who heads it up for us, will then get back in touch with you. It really is that simple. And if at any time whilst you're on the course that you feel that it's not for you, then do you know what? You can just walk away and no one's going to keep badgering you to get back on board with it. So you have complete control over how much or how little you want to do. That's the beauty of Alpha. So this is your invitation. We'd love to hear from you, so please do get in touch with us. Okay then, we've got just a few more minutes now before our service starts and so now's a great time to go and grab yourself a cuppa so that you're all ready for it to start on the hour. And don't forget, if you've got any questions in relation to anything that's taking place here or you'd simply like to find out more, then please do get in touch as we'd love to hear from you. We'll see you again in a few minutes time.
Hello there and welcome to Lakeside Church Online. We are so glad that you have chosen to join us today. We have people joining us not just from all over England but actually from all over the world. Why not take a moment and let us know what part of the country or world you're watching from by dropping a comment in our chat facility. If this is your first time with us we give you a massive welcome. We are so glad and to show you how special you are we want to give you one of our world famous lakeside pens. All you need to do is connect in the chat with one of our online pastors and they will sort out getting that to you. I don't know about you but I'm so looking forward to worshipping God today. As a church we are so blessed to have an amazing worship team. A little later on I will be bringing us the third part in our series, I'm Still Standing. I want to encourage you, as we're worshipping, ask God to prepare your heart for what he wants to say to you today. Let's take a moment to pray just before we hand over to the worship team. Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for this opportunity that we have to come together and worship you. Lord, I thank you that wherever we are in the world, you are with us. And as we spend this next hour or so, God, I just pray that you speak into our hearts, into our situations, into our lives. Be with us now as we worship you. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Your name is a light that the shadows can't deny. Your name cannot be overcome. Your name is a light forever lifted high. Your name cannot be Death could not hold you, the veil's all before you, you silence the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory, for you are raised to life again, for you have no right. Powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is.
What a powerful name is Nothing can stand against What a powerful name is The name of Jesus What a powerful name it is The name of Jesus Yeah, we echo what we've just been singing in that it really is a beautiful name. It's a name that brings hope. It's, it's one that restores. It's one that heals. It's a name that gives us new life. Thank you that it's a powerful name, that there is no name higher or greater or one that carries more authority. And King Jesus, we say today that we love you and we believe in you and that you're here with us now and we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Wherever you might be watching this from, would you say amen with me? Thank you, Dan and the team, once again, for leading us there. Okay, then let me share a few important notices with you before we take 60 seconds for our Minute Mingle. First of all, we're now only two weeks away from Easter. Can you believe that? And we've got a great three days planned over that weekend. To begin with, on Good Friday at 11 a.m., we're hosting an online service which will include a sharing communion together. On Easter Saturday, we're busy arranging an Easter car treasure hunt, which is going to be fun for all ages. It'll start and finish on our car park, and there are prizes up for grabs. Now, we want this to be something that you can encourage your friends to get involved with too. So over the next week, we're hoping to get a booking in system up on our website. So please keep a listening in ear out for more on that. And when you see it posted upon our social media pages, then please do share it and let's together get the word out. You know, it's a great way to make some connections with others and it really is going to be a lot of fun. And then on Easter Sunday, along with our 11 a.m. and 4 p.m. services, which will be online, we're hosting a one-hour worship service in our car park, which I'm so looking forward to as we celebrate Jesus' resurrection from the dead together. All I will say on that is come ready to sing your heart out. It's going to be so good. Now, as I film this, there are some places available, so if you're not yet booked in, then please head over to our website, where on the homepage you'll see where you can do that. And you'll also see all the other plans for Easter that I've just mentioned. And then lastly, can I say a huge thank you to you for your ongoing giving of your tithes and your offerings. As always, the different ways that you can give are on the screen for you, but thank you for the way that you continue to honour God with your finances. And if you're watching this today and you've never taken that step of obedience, then please do get in touch as I'd love to be able to chat that through with you and answer any questions that you might have. Well, that's all the notices, but we're gonna take the next 60 seconds for our Minute Mingle. And once again, there are a few prizes to be grabbed this week. So in the chat facility, why don't you answer the question, if you could nominate anyone to receive a little goodie bag from us this week, who would it be and why? It can be anyone, it could be a friend, a family member, school teacher, a work colleague, anyone who you think would be a worthy recipient of a little surprise turning up at their door this week. And then let us know in the chat over the next 60 seconds. Come on, let's all engage with this. But let me count us in. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> It's so good to be with you today and to bring you the third part of our series, I'm Still Standing. It is really difficult, just like Pastor Matt said a few weeks ago, to not just burst into song right now, but that would make many of you switch off right away. So I will resist the temptation. Today we're going to look at I'm Standing Out. I don't know about you, but I'm sure you can think of many stories of people who stood out over the years, some of 
for amazing feats, things that they did, whether it was a sporting achievement, like my team Spurs winning the league and cup double in 1960-61 season, and they've won very little since, or an invention like the telephone, or maybe we can think of some great leaders. I suppose the most recent that stands in many people's thoughts would be Sir Tom Moore, a man that stood out for his selflessness and desire to bless others. But we can also, I'm sure, think of people who stood out for all the wrong reasons too. How they abused their position, locked in our memories are horrendous actions that many of us cannot process of how a human being could be so bad. Sadly, some of us have personal memories of people, situations that stand out to us for all the wrong reasons. Then there are times where you've maybe stood out and it hasn't been intentional, maybe embarrassing moments. I'm sure you'll not be surprised, I've had a few. I remember going to a campaigner fancy dress Christmas party as an impressionable 15 year old, dressed as Ross Abbott's famous Cooperman character. I burst in the doors of the hall to find out to my horror that I was the only one out of 30 young people that did what I was supposed to do and dress up. I was so, so embarrassed, but being me, I just got on with it. But I learned a lesson that day, and now when people invite me to fancy dress parties, I am extremely careful to make sure that others are dressing up too. Standing out can be something that most of the time scares the life out of us, doesn't it? Young or old, the thought of the spotlight setting on us scares us. It's so much easier to stay in the shadow. Here's something that Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 to 16. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine to others and they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. These verses are such a great reminder to us all. The true Christian cannot be hid. We cannot escape notice. We are to be like a city set upon a hill, a candle set upon a candlestick. But here's a really important thought. As Christians, we should never desire to hide our light. We can't profess to be forgiven, to be followers of Jesus, and then deliberately hide it from others. If we truly understand what it means to be a Christian, realising what the grace of God means to us and has done for us, understand that God died for us to receive and reflect his love to this world, then we cannot deny it or, or God by concealing it. If you're one of those people that finds it really easy to conceal your faith, your Christian life, you need to take some time today to ask yourself what it is that causes you to live in contradiction to what God intends. That might be hard to hear. It's something that I constantly check on myself because we can all fall into the trap set by Satan to coast along in life doing nothing for Jesus. But I have a simple question for each of us this morning. By doing this, coasting along as a Christian, influencing no one towards Jesus, is that living out your call in your life? Living as Jesus has called you to be, to stand out? I think it's so important that we reevaluate what living for Jesus means, what shining our light means. Here's a challenge. The next time you're in a situation where you have a chance to share you're a Christian, don't avoid taking that chance. Remind yourself it's only a fool that has a candle lit and then covers it. The urge that comes to stop you sharing comes from Satan. He wants to extinguish your light. Instead, let's trust God and speak out, stand out and stand tall. As people get to know you, you're, you're, you're a Christian, it is more important to live consistently. The church in Thessalonica were known for their faithful work, their loving deeds and enduring hope. 
How amazing that would be to have that type of reputation. We should all long to have it. As Christians, we're called a peculiar people, some more peculiar than others, I might say. We're called to be different. We're called to stand out, not to blend in. I'm, as you know, and if you've listened to me over the last 18 months, a massive advocate of reaching out to those around us, our neighbours, our friends, work colleagues, our families, and even the stranger in the street. So I don't want to confuse you. We stand out in the way we speak, the way we act, in the way we react, but we do that in the company of the lost, part of but not blended in. How can we be someone who stands out for the right reasons and not the wrong ones? Today I want us to take a few moments and practically think of what this means to us. The first thing I want us to think about is standing out through our words. Do you have control of your tongue? What comes out when you open your mouth? So important. Do people relate God, Jesus, to you because of the way you speak? Sometimes we have to take stock of what way we speak, what way we react. I'm ashamed to say that sometimes I don't react in the way I should. Sometimes I can be sharp in the way I answer Esther or even speak to her at times. How I respond, uh, sometimes it can be rude um, and and. I have found it really difficult to bite my tongue, especially when things are said about Esther or, or in situations like that. The thing is, it's something as Christians that needs to set us apart from others. What comes out of our mouths can actually reflect where our minds are and, and what condition our heart is. It can reflect the distance we are from God as well. Proverbs 12 verse 18 says, the words of the reckless pierce like swords, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. I've literally just had a situation in our new house that could have gone one of two ways. When we moved in, we decided to get a light on the back of our wall of our house to let us see what Meg and Ruby were getting up to at the end of the garden at night time. So we got a light put up and it was perfect. It let us see everything we needed to and it didn't shine in the either garden on the left of us or on the right of us. Yesterday, I came down the stairs to a note through the door with no name or address on it, saying that our light was lighting up the back of two houses and sending a large shadow from a tree as well. And, and could I get the light fixed so it didn't light their homes up at night time? There was a time when I wouldn't have cared or I would have thought at least put your name or address on it, but not now. So instead of letting it fester, I went round to the house I was sure had sent the letter and I apologised to them. They were so thankful and the man said I'd made his day, that I hadn't reacted in a bad way and that it was refreshing to be able to sort this out in a pleasant manner. That opened the door to me to explain I was one of the pastors from the Excite Church and I even said I was taking shining my light to a whole new level. Friends, we need to be careful to how we react. Satan wants us to be at odds with our neighbours. But what's more important, having things the way we want or opening doors to further conversations that might lead others to Jesus. Remember in Proverbs chapter 18 verse 21 it says the tongue has the power of life and death and those who love it will eat its fruit. Let's not be people who use our tongues to destroy and to bring down. Let's not be gossips, use bad language, speak words full of anger. Let's be people that use our tongues for good. We need to be careful, but our tongue can be used the right way as well. And when that is done, they are powerful, bringing only goodness. Words that bring comfort, words that bring encouragement, that build people up. Let's be people who stand out 
because we don't judge, we don't gossip, we don't swear or tell bad jokes, but instead have tongues full of love, encouragement and reflect who we claim to be and follow. Just before I move on, I really feel God has impressed on my heart to say to someone or maybe more than one person, stop pushing people away from, from God. It's not our job to judge people for the way they live, the way they dress or the choices they make. It's our job to love the way that Jesus loved. Let's love people with what we say and watch the shift in the relationships you have been desperate to fix. We don't drag people screaming and kicking to Jesus. They need to be attracted to him. They need to want to have what you have, a relationship that has made you stand out. The second thing I want us to think about, standing out with our works. Are you recognized to be a follower of Jesus by the things you do? Do people think that person is different? than the normal because they show love in action. James chapter two, verses 14 to 17 tells us, what good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Such a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. I don't know about you, but that's some challenging verses. Although at the same time, if you're seeking after Jesus, if you're standing out for him, then the things that break Jesus' heart will break yours too. Only a number of weeks ago, we had a, a week of intentional mission to those around us. I'm sure you all got involved, stepped out of the boat, pushed new boundaries with your neighbours and friends. I'm sure you all look back on that week and, and, and think, that was so amazing to bless those around me. I know new people. I've started new relationships. I've reflected Jesus to my family. Or did you? How many of you feel a little bit uncomfortable because you did nothing? I'm not saying this to make you feel uncomfortable, but if you are feeling uncomfortable, maybe that's the Holy Spirit gently encouraging you. Look, it was great to do a week of intentional mission, but more importantly, it's about becoming a way of life. I've heard many people say recently, what will the new normal be like when we get out of lockdown? Imagine if our new normal was as Christians to lay down our lives for others. Sounds a, special, a pretty special thing to do. Imagine the buzz of being able to help others and through your works they see Jesus and they're drawn to him. There is only one way to make this happen and that is all in. When we give our lives to Jesus, that's what it means. Access all areas all in. Think about this. In a few weeks time we can start meeting in gardens. Imagine if those moments our neighbours, friends, family saw differences in us, good differences in us, in our words and our works. Living like Jesus, I believe if we live that way it will open the door to us sharing our story, our testimonies. And then I believe that would lead us to a point in those relationships where we can do the final thing to help us stand out. That is standing out through wonders. Every time Jesus did a miracle, it revealed who he was and strengthened people's belief in God. Before Jesus ascended to heaven, he told his disciples that he would send the Holy Spirit, the advocate, to help them. As we pray for people, as we step out in faith, we do it through the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of Jesus. Over and over again in scripture, we read in Jesus' name. The devils were powerless because of his name. Luke chapter 10 verse 17. 
The demons were cast out in his name. Mark chapter 16 verse 17 and 18. Healing occurred in his name. Acts chapter 3 verse 6. Salvation comes in his name. Acts chapter 4 verse 12. We are to baptize in Jesus' name. Matthew 28 verse 19. Everything we do and say is in Jesus' name. Colossians 3 verse 17. But it is praying in Jesus' name I want us to focus on. Jesus has invited, urged and commanded us to pray in his name and he promised, he has promised incredible results. We read in John chapter 14 verses 13 and 14 and I will do whatever you ask in my name so the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask for me anything in my name and I will do it. In John chapter 16 verses 23 and 24 it says, In that day you will no longer ask anything in my name. Very truly I tell you, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete. What powerful words. So my question is, why are we not doing it or doing it more? Imagine if we stood out and prayed for things to change for our family and friends and as we have been promised we start to see change, miracles happening. What would be the reaction? People would see Jesus. How many of us truthfully pray in Jesus' name asking for wonders, miracles to happen? I understand that there are those fears and doubts, but actually if we lose the fear and replace it with unfaltering faith, we will, I believe, see great things happen. Not because you or me are anything special, but the one we love and serve is beyond special. He is a way maker, he's a miracle worker, and when God moves, people's lives are transformed. So let's start to put this into our daily walk in life. As we build relationships with people, as they see what we are, that we are different, they will be more open to allowing us to pray for them. Imagine if in those moments, Jesus does something miraculous. Like everything I've talked about today, there are decisions you need to make. But I want to finish where I started by saying, who lights a candle and puts it under a bowl? If you have a bowl over your light, then I need to talk straight to you. It can't continue. If you're a true follower of Jesus, then it is time to stand out and to be known as a Jesus follower. Willing to be recognized by the way you live. Through your words, your works and the wonders that are seen through your faith in a God who is real. I want to take a moment to speak to, you, to those of you who are watching and you don't know Jesus. Well, not in a personal way. I want to reach out to you now and tell you something true and life-changing. God loves you so, so much. In fact, so much that he sent his son Jesus into this world to take your punishment and mine. He, sent, he was sent as a substitute so that our sins could be forgiven and that we could enter into that personal relationship I've been talking about. Imagine this, you are loved. You could have true purpose today in your life. No more loneliness and your future, your eternity is safe with Jesus. The Bible says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I can't guarantee you a life with no trouble, but what I can assure you is you will never be on your own again, full of joy and peace. That's something that we all need and it's available to you today, right now. All you need to do is believe and receive. Why not pray this simple prayer with me now? Lord, I come to you today knowing that I have sinned and I need your help. Please forgive me. I thank you for dying in my place, 
Please come into my life and lead me in your ways. I surrender my life into your hands. Help me to live my new life for you, full of your love, joy and peace. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you've prayed this prayer for the first time, please do me a massive favour by letting us know so we can connect with you and help you. If you're watching on Church Online, you will see a widget now at the bottom of the screen. Simply hit that and follow the directions to let us know how we can help you and connect with you. If you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, let one of our online pastors know by giving them a thumbs up or saying that you've decided to follow Jesus. The final way to get in touch with us is by simply going on to our website, lakesidechurch.uk and go to our connect, contact page. Thank you so much for listening today. I'm going to hand this back to the worship team now. God bless you all. The Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you. Children and the children in this presence. Come 
Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope you've enjoyed your time with us. If you've been challenged by the message and prayed the prayer of salvation, please let us know. Also, if you have anything at all that you need our help with, please contact us at lakesidechurch.uk. Don't forget we have our after service hangout Zoom starting straight after this, so why not grab a cuppa and come on? We would love to see you. Remember, through the week, our various meetings, Tuesday night for the prayer meeting and our different life groups as well. We look forward to having you back with us next Sunday when Pastor Richard will be bringing us the final part of our series. Stay safe, stay connected and be blessed. Amen. Thank you.